Hello everybody, I'm Carlos Sirta to a brand new episode. I'm Bobby Fly and today we are playing Heart of the Forest in the World of the Apocalypse universe by Different Tales. It's a fantastic narrative game where we get to play as a werewolf and, well, basically we started out as a, a young clueless lady who travels uh, half the globe to actually find her family's whereabouts. However, in the process, she discovered that she might be a werewolf and no sooner than later did she actually encounter some instances, some happenstances that actually forced her into revealing her true form, into adopting her true form without her knowledge, without her prior knowing. That's the way that supernaturals actually work in the World of Darkness setting. Uh, people. Uh, that actually have some sleeping qualities and then they would run rampant when given just the, uh, the, the spark and that's it. So basically, we're halfway in, through our story, which has been a fantastic journey in so far, and I'm really looking forward into discovering the other niceties that the game has to offer to us. So let's dive right into it, let's continue. So we begin the chapter 4, Lost in the Woods. Let's see what's gonna happen. So you see that our health is pretty much high. We have just one willpower and one rage, uh, one extra rage. And this must be because time passed by. And wait a minute, we've just adopted a brand new form called Lupus. Right, so basically our breed is Homid. Homid is a Garu. Garu are supposed to be the werewolves of human ancestry. And Homid is the human form of the Garu. Our auspice is yet unknown. The auspice is supposed to be our class. The, the, not only the class, but the phase of the moon when we were born. The moon actually dictates what's gonna happen of us, what role we're gonna ad uh, adopt in our tribe. And it's quite unique and quite different from the other things that we've encountered in other RPGs in so far. Our rank is a cup because basically we've just grew up to understand, to learn to realize our own potential, let alone understand and train our gifts and everything. And our tribe, we're not familiar, we're not sure what tribe we are. There are so many different tribes in Werewolf the Apocalypse universe, and they are so uh, fruitful, so vibrant with additional details in life, and that I'm reluctant to actually, you know, uh, get a hunch or something. So I don't want to bet on anything, I just want the game to uh, come up with a tribe for us in the way that we actually played the game. So we've, we've grown to be brave and analytical, a bit inspiring, quite spiritual and not much cunning, which is okay I guess. Our condition is healthy and uh, I was told that my family left unpaid debts to the forest. Our new goal, which is a mission, is to stop the logging, hopefully without violence, pursue to regain willpower. And our new goal for our identity is to find out what's happening to us, pursue this to gain willpower again. Uh, from the friends that we have, Bartek is dead because we killed him in cold blood without even realizing that. Because when we adopted the Krinos form, the, that's the, the primal werewolf form, we actually we couldn't actually fathom exactly who was who because we were everything was based on our scent rather than our sight which was a fantastic actually take on the perception the relative perception of a werewolf which i really liked cool so the heart of the forest our rage is low the morning smelled of safety fur earth and the forest i opened my eyes and saw other people cuddling up to me their muzzles resting on their paws as they slept. Gentle snoring filled the warm space under the low-hanging branches of an old spruce tree. Um, so what to do? I went outside, or we're gonna lose willpower if we quietly crawl outside. Just Let's just go outside just like that. Stepping over the sleeping forms, I made my way outside. Alone, hiding in the tall grass, I sniffed around. The sky was bright and the forest around me was dark and full of interesting smells. High in the trees, birds yelled about status, sex and violence.
Should we gain more rage? Because right now we are calm. Should we be more, more alarmed? I think not. Let's just leave it as is. Memory started to come back. Something opened in my mind and memory started flooding back. The fight, the gunshot, the strange dream about being a werewolf. A, cre a creature stirred in bu a creature stirred in bushes nearby. A tall dark silhouette, a strangely familiar smell. I tensed up. I tensed up and watched the human as they looked around. Careful, it mentions human, right? Well, it really depends on whether this is a homemade or just, you know, referring to a human as a creature. Let's see. Maya, there you are, they said when they noticed me. It was time to get out of there. It's funny how we couldn't discern the gender of the one who actually um, called for us because it mentions, it mentions them as they, which actually m means that we are more sent uh, we're, we're more, we rely more on scent rather than sight, which is great. So I spasmed, and that's because I'm a lupus. Suddenly, a feeling like cramp or spasm surged through me, and everything changed. I was homied, the human form. My body started resetting itself to the familiar shape, and it hurt. Bones broke and fused again. Muscles and sinews moved under my skin. I cried and thrashed. Then, panting and sweaty, I was homied again. I hit the ground with my bare ass. Colors exploded. The morning breeze suddenly became cold. And I shivered. Because we have no fur, right? And because we've uh, given way to, uh, to our lupus site, the, it, it's rumored that canines do actually have a less... Uh, sensitivity in colors and that humans watch the, the world in more vibrant colors and this is how it is portrayed right now so I looked up confused I looked at the person approaching me Cornell is loyal you look cold Cornell smirked and threw me a bundle of clothes you'd better not change for a while they won't survive it not until you learn the right at least hmm. okay I took the bundle because when I changed, I actually tore through my clothes, right? I snatched the bundle and started pulling the clothes on. Sneakers, loose-fitting jeans, a hoodie with a unicorn. They fit perfectly. I thought about the previous night. I thought about it the previous night when I was raging through the forest, about how differently I experienced the world through the wolf senses, and about the discomfort and confusion of changing shape. So I was a werewolf. Boom! Our identity now is to must our, our goal is to master the change. There was no denying it. I was no longer human. I kept my guard because I'm brave. Don't come any closer, I barked. You have come. You have some serious explaining to do. That's why we're all. Sorry. That's why we've all come here today. We just stood there for a moment, comfortable in silence. I was wondering how one usually learned that they were a werewolf. But how come nobody knew about werewolves? I asked Cornell. So I asked Cornell about his story, giving a point of my willpower. So how did you become a werewolf? I said. I was born a werewolf, it seems, he answered. I asked again. How did you learn you were a werewolf? I asked again. Oh, that. I was serving in Afghanistan. There was an ambush. ambush. Stuff happened. Okay, I get, yeah. I guess he was a soldier and he got ambushed in Afghanistan and then he turned into Krinos and ransacked everything. What stuff? Mm, shouldn't I be that um, intrusive? Werewolf stuff. He wasn't very forthcoming. They sent me home with a PTSD and once home I got found by others. They needed someone who knew how to fight. Why? I have too many questions. Why? I asked. We were the real eco-terrorists back then, my pack and I, but I realized that violence only breeds more violence, and it's not the way I want to follow. But how come nobody knew about werewolves? That's my second question. It doesn't make any sense. It suddenly struck me. 
How come nobody knows werewolves exist? We protect the veil, was the answer. A poetic term for the false assumption that the supernatural does not exist, which the delirium reinforces, okay, was the answer. It's easy to convince humans that supernatural doesn't exist. They already want to believe that, and the delirium helps. It's a madness and memory loss suffered by humans who look upon a guru in Krinos form. Ah, makes sense now. Delirium? You mean delirium was in the medical condition, I asked, remembering something that I'd read about acute conf confusional states. You'll have to ask Pat for that, but the gist of it is that humans are incapable of remembering that they saw a crinos. He laughed. They panic, turn away, and instantly forget every time. So crinos is the half-wolf, half-human half half war form of the guru, the werewolf form. Then I realized, well, Technically speaking, we are werewolves. No matter what our our uh, uh, what our one no no matter what our form is, but then we switch between homid, crinos, and lupus. Homid being the human-like form, uh, lupus being the wolf-like form, and crinos being the amalgam of those two, the war form, the one that you know, the hulking beast with the big long fangs, and you know everything goes. Then I realized something something important. The wolves had awoken. At some point, the rest of the party had awoken and joined us. The clearing was full of wolves. Fuck. Okay. The wolves were closing in on me, but they weren't really wolves, were they? They were werewolves like me. Acceptance, cooperation, or denial escape? Obviously, acceptance and cooperation. I really dig the art style, I like it a lot. Especially the yellow eyes, it reminds me a lot of felines. But then again, we're canines, right? Yeah. <laughs> the headless body was heavy. They said that as my first kill, it was my burden, it was my duty to take it to the barrows. I don't want to deny anything because that's my uh, thing. Well, I actually killed him, but I didn't want to. I didn't have my own, my control at that time. So I got my shit together and lost my uh, last point of willpower. Now I'm impaired. I got my shit together, lifted the corpse and threw it over my shoulder. You have to balance the death you cause with your achievements. Cornell looked me in the eyes. That is the path of the guru. He accompanied me, carrying the severed head in a bag. The others stayed behind, covering the tracks. I focused on the walk. I didn't want to talk or to think for that matter. Not about the person I was carrying, or rather trying to carry. It was just a thing. I needed to transport it from point A to point B. That was it. I can't do this. But the body was too heavy. So I lost one health. I kept dragging the body, but the burden was too much to bear. I was tired and hurt. And I, could, I just couldn't do it anymore. I looked at the body because I have zero willpower and I wanted, really wanted to say something, but I choked on her. I choked on my words. I curled up into a ball with my arms around my head. I couldn't. I can't, I said, and then it was the only thing I could say, louder and louder, until it became a shriek. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Colonel sighed and kneeled beside me. You're a werewolf, Gaia's soldier. Gaia is the earth in both a physical and spiritual sense, the mother goddess. Probably coming from the uh, ancient, Greek, ancient Greek word for earth, which is yeah, the goddess of the earth, the goddess of nature and everything. There's nothing, nothing you can do. Get up, we have a world to save, and you have a legacy to fulfill and a debt to pay. He was right. So he gave me one willpower because he, I progressed towards my mission. I took a deep breath. He was right. I was here for a reason and I had things to do. I changed. Should I change? No, suddenly I knew what to do. No, I, I don't want to spend more willpower, really. I changed. 
choose, choose your form. What are you, what are you telling me about? So, Glabro is strong enough to lift heavy things without breaking a sweat and intimidate. This might be the form that we're gonna adopt now. Hispo is a monstrous wolf, smart, fast, heavy, and absolutely scary, like a dire wolf, right? Lupus is the wolf form, a majestic animal with all these advantages and limitations, looks great on camera. And Krinos is a war form, ruthless killing machine, there's nothing subtle about it. So Glabro, let's switch to Glabro form. Whoa, check this out. I was Glabro, the near human form. I like I like this so much, the way that they actually gave us something. They asked of us to, you know, switch to a form that you that we want to, and it's fantastic. So the pain was stronger than I ever imagined. I felt my muscles spasm as they rearranged themselves. My jaw cracked and my mouth filled with blood. I clenched my fists and claws drove into my palms. I screamed when I rose, panting and sweaty. I was more than human. I was glabro, wolfish, strong and scary. It hurt as hell. Find your so we have a new goal. Find your place among the guru. The change hurt more than I expected. The world shifted. Not much, but enough. I felt my teeth get sharper and muscles stronger. I picked up the body. It was a lot lighter. We went on. So our rage is low. That's why we got this, this thing. As we made our way through the forest, I realized we weren't alone. Somehow, I knew what I'd see before I even saw it. A white weasel and a dark grey wolf. Ah, my companion smiled. I see you've noticed our patrons. Patrons? A spirit joined to a pack or tribe and representative of its inner nature. Something like a totem animal or something. Patrons? Sorry, what now? Patrons, I asked? Yes, the spirits who help us fight our war. The two animals stopped in front of me in the middle of the path. We came here to teach the cub, said the wolf. She smelled of ash and tears. Was I hallucinating? So they are spirits, right? Wow. I couldn't believe what I saw. It made no sense. I felt as if my brain was short-circuiting, trying to interpret signals not meant for human senses. Was there really a wolf? The one who talked, actually? My eyes told me there was a wolf staring at me, but when I looked at it, I felt ash on my tongue. I heard the morning howl so deep it reverberated in my bones, and I smelled fire. And when it talked, it was like the rustling of leaves formed words in my ah, like the rustling of leaves formed words in my mind. They wouldn't leave me alone. But hallucinations are not. They just wouldn't leave me alone. The weasel circled me, and before I knew it, I could feel small claws on my leg, then on my back, and then on my arm. It smelled of musk and electricity, and then it bit my ear. Okay. I tried to shake it off. Get off me, I yelled, trying to knock the weasel off my arm. Who oh, a feisty one. I like it. Its electronic voice echoed in my head. Enough, the wolf growled. Or at least that was what my brain decided to hear. I felt the weasel draw its breath. In the beginning there was Gaia, also known as Mother Earth, and she gave birth to a mighty breed of warriors, the weasel began. It sounded electronical, like a teenager reading a Wikipedia page over a voice chat. They were called Garu, that's werewolves in werewolfish, and their sole purpose was to protect Gaia. They failed, wailed the wolf. I looked to the weasel for advice. Why did they fail? I looked to the weasel for advice. When time began, Gaia released three primal forces upon the earth. The weaver, the wild, and the worm, the weasel continued. The wild was the untamed force of life and creation. The cold, ruthless weaver gave structure to the world, and the worm destroyed what needed to be destroyed, creating balance. Were we creatures, were we creatures of the wild? Because we are untamed force of life. So where were those creatures of the wild? I asked. An untamed force of life. They were Gaia's children. The wolf snarled. Born to herd and contain humans. So what went wrong? 
I can see that something went wrong, I smiled wryly. The weaver grew too ambitious and trapped the worm within its lifeless web. Okay. The weasel answered, confined... The weasel answered, confined and denied the worm went slowly insane. Ah, because it was trapped, right? The wolf wailed. Now Gaia is dying, choked by the weaver, by technology, by civilization, right? And eaten alive by the worm, wailed the wolf. And then wild is not the one you should fight, she snarled. You were born to protect it. Then it turned and led the way. It took us to the barrows. The barrows looked just as I remembered them, but somehow calmer, warm and welcoming. Cornell kneeled, near one, knelt, kneeled, kneeled, or knelt. Kneeled near one of the mounds, put his hand on it and whispered a few words. I saw the ground open slowly, like a mouth in the earth. I sighed. Let's do this. We put the body in the hole. Okay, so the ground... Oh, ah! Okay, so Cornell spoke and the ground opened. So we buried the, the person. Mm. We took the severed head and the body had wrapped up in sheets and put them in the hole. It closed slowly and I could swear I heard the trees nearby sigh in anticipation. The wolf howled and I could feel the hair on my hands rise. Welcome to your new life, the talking white weasel grinned. We have something else to show you. I ran with them. I, I won't ask too, too much questions. You're a cub, so you have a special privileges, said the weasel. Pushcha will grant you a vision. You must see to under you must see to understand, said the wolf. Think carefully before you choose what to see. I'd rather not dwell to the past, neither live for the future. I want to see the present. How I can do such stuff. The ever changing paths. It was hard to find the den, although I knew where it was. Pusha is friendly, so I felt the Pusha playing with me, twisting paths, blocking my way with bushes and dead trees, and then suddenly opening a new path that was straight and full of sunshine. But I pushed on, so I didn't get tired of it. Determined, I pushed on. Since the change, I had become acutely aware of how my body worked, and I remember what humans were good at, running. Stubborn, relentless, long-distance running. Not as fast as a deer, not as nimble as a wolf, but steady and without rest. So I ran. Then I was there. It does look like a wolf, this thing, right? So the eyes here, and then some horns out of it. Well, who knows? And then I was there, an old den hidden in the roots of a crooked pine. I crouched down. And looked into the hole, a sudden gust of wind brought with it all the almost imperceptible smell of wolf cubs. I lay down under the tree and closed my eyes. I could feel the sun, the sun's caress on my skin. I can feel the sun on my face. The wind rustles through the leaves and the air smells of sweet dew and greenery. I breathe it in and it fills me with peace and warmth. Ah, such... I'm sorry, such a harmonious... Uh, picture. I close my eyes, the ever-changing present. I close my eyes and extend my hands and feel my fingers dip into the thickness of the grass that covers the earth. I hear a whisper. I am the grass, it whispers to me. I cover everything. A bird flies over the forest. The trees move their branches like green, undulating waves over an endless ocean. I see trees. I see trees that are eaten by bugs. They desiccate and die. I see loggers. I see humans felling the sick trees to protect the healthy ones. I see humans living in the forest. I saw a man sitting motionless against a tree trunk and a little squirrel walking down to him curious. I'm not alone. So I found somebody. I hear the mournful howl of a lonely, heartbroken wolf somewhere in the forest. Look again, it says, and the smell of ash and tears overwhelms me. And I look. So I look again. I see sickness. 
I see trees that are eaten by bugs that desiccate and die. I see hunters. Humans come and feed the animals only to shoot them. I see humans destroying the forest. The forest tries to heal itself, but nobody no notices the sickness. Humans turn the forest into a desert. I've seen enough. I've seen enough, I say. I'm a warrior, and if the forest needs me, I'm ready. I feel like part of it. I'm the forest, the world says to me. Let me work. So I let it go. I let it go, and I'm a tree, and a man, and a squirrel. A man opens his hand. There is an acorn there. A squirrel grabs it and runs away. I see a little girl laughing, delighted when she sees it. I open my eyes. So many vivid pictures. And I saw the wolf looking at me. Come with me, it's in your blood, she said to me. There is no one else to be my cub. Come to me, child. I will nurse you and I will lick your wounds. We will kill together, we will feast and we will be merry. The forest will grow. I looked at her. I looked at her and perhaps for the first time I saw her for who she was. Her belt was marred with fire, her eyes were smoking embers, ash was falling from her heaving flanks. She looked old, ancient, sad and alone. Was she cousin's mother? Who's cousin, by the way? Is, is he, yeah, is he our brother, allegedly? So one of the two cubs that got picked up by humans? She was cousin's mother. Mourning her stolen cubs, howling in the woods, waiting for a response that never came. But she was more than that. She was the Puscha. She was, she was also the spirit of the forest. Wounded, hurt, violated, and mourning all her children that humans had killed. At least that was what I thought when I looked at her. The wolf mother looked back at me and something in her eyes made me realize that she was helping my family for generations and that my family used to serve her. Join me, she pleaded. Only you can understand me. Only you. I went to her and God increased rage. I went to her and she accepted me and I accepted myself. Such a fantastic... Narrative, narration. The wolf mother was the voice of the forest, stop the logging at any cost. Mm. And I finally understood who I was. The wind howled, the trees shook their branches, and the humans looked at the forest in terror. The wind howled. Okay. It looks like it's either them or us, right? A lone howl pierced the silence like a single ray of moonlight in the darkness. Then there was another one. And then another, and then another, a choir of voices, triumphant and joyful. I opened my eyes. When I opened my eyes, I was in the clearing. Around me, there were wolves, huge, monstrous wolves, howling at the moon. I joined them. I was Hispo, yeah, the monstrous wolf form. The pain was overwhelming, my spine cracked and twisted, my knees and ankles broke and I fell on the ground, my jaw shattered and rearranged itself, my whole skin was on fire, rippling and spout sprouting fur, I howled in agony. When I rose panting and spitting blood, I was hispo, with strong paws, mighty jaws and a mane of fur. More than a wolf, scary and monstrous, instinctively I changed and joined the choir. My voice was unsteady at first, but soon I found my own note, a unique addition to the chorus. Well, hello there, Cornell smiled at me, and welcome to the set. The what? Rage. 
I have no idea what you're talking about. I snapped angry and confused. For the werewolf, the pack is family, Cornell explained. And an alliance of packs united in a common goal is a sect. <gasps> so, there, so there were two packs there. I realized that there must be at least two packs there. I looked at Cornell. A great grey-eyed wolf changed into Cornell, and soon Pat and Kim joined him. We are the Winter Weasel Pack, said Kim. A white shadow settled on Pat's shoulder. I smelled mask and electricity. Ah! That was the spirit animal that I encountered before, right? The weasel. I looked at Olga, and she must be the Ashen Wolf. The pack of the Ashen Wolf. Three of the monstrous wolves changed. Olga and Lisa stood up, human looking again. Their clothes rumpled. A yellow eyed wolf by their side turned out to be Daniel. We are the pack of the morning wolf mother, said Olga. They smelled of ashen tears, and for a moment I saw the wolf spirit among them. We are all Gaia's soldiers, said Cornell, in that we have no choice, but we can choose whom we fight alongside. Who was the enemy? Well, I kind of know, right? If there is a war, who's the enemy? I asked. Smidge, the word Daniel said, sounded like Shmi, and reeked of decay and burning oil. The weir, the distraction, Olga translated. Corruption, pollution, a cancerous disease devouring reality. Did I have to join a pack? Do I have to choose a pack? I asked, just to make sure. No guru can survive on their own, Cornell said with sympathy. Your old human life is over, but we will never abandon you. I had so many questions. I have so many questions, I shook my head. How did the spirits work? What about the spirits, I asked. How does that work? The world casts a shadow, and we call it the Ombra, said Lisa. And in the shadow, Every living creature, every emotion and idea, every important object exists as a spirit. Isn't this a philosophy from Plato? From Plato? Like the, there is a different world uh, that houses the original ideas of the objects and the people that cast their shadow onto the mortal world. So in a sense, according to his philosophical idea, is that uh, the true world exists somewhere else, somewhere differently, and in that world, the original essence of the things and people we encounter in our world here exists. So basically, everything you see here in this, in this mortal plane is transitory. Everything is just passing by. That is why everything is susceptible to aging and you know deterioration so it's quite it, it it raises a rather nice philosophical debate over how the uh, wolves and the neoplatonics actually view the world whether they complement each other or not it's it's such a fantastic thing i really love it when such Horror narratives also enclose some sort of philosophy behind them. That's all you need to know at the moment. What about the moon? So please do forgive me if it was Socrates or Plato. I think it was Plato. I'm gonna look it up and let you know in down below the comments. So what about the moon? Why is the moon so important to us? Why did I hear the moon whispering to me? I asked. Luna gave us rage. That's why she's important, Olga said. And that's why you'll never be able to touch silver again. Because the the because Luna is silver, possibly. Was every sept that diverse? You're all from all over Europe, I noticed. Is this like a standard for a sept? I look at Olga. I looked at Olga. I didn't even know if that was a stupid question or a smart one. I looked at her. Normally the tribes keep to themselves, Olga grimaced, but we're in a desperate situation and had to form rather unorthodox alliances. There are at least a dozen tribes, Daniel interrupted, and I hope, Maya, that you will choose yours wisely. I summed it up. So do I have to choose my tribe? 
So if I got this all right, I've been conscripted into an ancient war against the worm, I said slowly, trying to put it all together, and the moon gave me rage as a weapon, but I must avoid silver. I took a breath. And there's a whole secret world of spirits, I continued, and have to join a pack and choose a tribe. Exactly, Lisa nodded. As for the tribe, there are two people who would mentor you now. Olga is from the Black Furies, an ancient tribe of women warriors, and Cornell is from the Children of Gaia, and he's more a peace and a harmony guy. What about my family's tribe, by the way? The Shadow of Fenris. Hey, what about my family's tribe, I asked. Lisa winced, Daniel sighed, Olga shook her head. What was the matter? What's the matter, I asked again. Your ancestors were the Ghetto of Fenris, and no one here wants to have to have anything to do with that tribe, Cornell answered. They stand against everything we believe in. I don't want to go against them right now. Let's just cooperate. Were they really that bad? They surely aren't that bad, I asked, are they? Ghetto Fenris are the most radical Garou supremacists that ever marked the face of Earth, Kim scoffed. Like legit fascist werewolves. Some of them literally worked for Hitler. Ghetto Fenris. A tribe of werewolf supremacists who celebrate the destruction of the human world that Father Fenrir promises at Ragnarok, antagonistic to the other tribes to the extent that some whisper of weird obtained, hated and distrusted, many see them as another enemy in the war of apocalypse. Wow. Uh, I had the right to know my legacy. I don't need to actually join my family's tribe, but thank you for telling me, I said. I had the right to learn about where I came from. For a moment, we were all silent. I need to know more about the tribes. I, uh, and find an option that would really resonate with who I was. I can talk to Kim. Kim told me about the bone knowers, urban werewolves fighting for the disadvantaged and the marginalized. Children of the rat. Did they really have a rat as a patron? Do you really have the rat as a tribe patron? I asked. Sure we do, Kim answered. He's a very good patron, resilient. You want to be like a rat, always managing, always afloat. They kept talking. And this shit here, they gesture around. This shit comes from prejudice and from exclusion and from greed. Take greed and prejudice away and 90% of the world's problems are solved. I would, I would also add egoism to that. They sighed heavily. Now tell it to the other Garu, and they look down at you because you're a bone nowhere, and they think you're they are superior. Prejudice, prejudice everywhere. I talked with Pat. Pat was a glass walker, and her tribe was finding its niche in cutting edge technological cityscapes among the strands of the weaver's net. It wounded. It sounded intriguing. We talked for a while. What was she doing in the forest? So you are basically a city dweller, I observed. All glass walkers are. It's our natural habitat. I feel quite out of place in the forest. That got my interest. Is it a tribe thing, I asked, interested. That's what it is, she nodded. We use the weaver to fight the worm, and the forest is not the weaver's domain. And I happen to be quite fond of humanity. They have great potential. She didn't look like a werewolf at all. How did you get a spirit patron anyway? How did you get a winter weasel to be your patron? I was curious. I caught it, said Pat. Or rather, I made sure it would have more to eat with me than alone. That's how you catch weasels. That's why the weasel has that electro voice, right? Because it's... It's... A spirit that got attracted by a glasswalker or something like that? Was it a forest spirit? Ah, that's my question. Cool. But it's a forest spirit, isn't it? I think it's a weasel, so it gets accustomed to live where there is food, and right now it's the city. It hunts electricity spirits these days and feasts on them. She didn't look like a werewolf at all. I wouldn't take you for a werewolf, you know, I said to Pat. She snorted. Why? She looked... I would have said, much more ordinary. 
Which looked harmless. Because you look mostly harmless, I admitted. She shrugged. I am, and I didn't expect to turn out a werewolf either. I was a student, happy with my tablet and coding, and then boom, I was a guru. How did she meet Cornell? How did you meet Cornell? I was curious. I was in his first pack. We were both hanging out with a hacktivist crowd back then, when things went south and he disappeared. I found him. How? I don't want to pry into her uh, story. Pat rolled your eyes. Girl, please, I'm a tech nerd. So I found him and talked him into coming back. I had to think it over. Okay. Finally, I stopped asking. I had to think over what I'd learned. Okay, let's talk to Daniel. I'm going to spend my willpower to learn more about the other tribes as well. I asked Daniel if I could join his tribe, but he didn't understand the question. I'm the red talent, he said, as if it explained everything. And that's the favorite part, because this is my favorite tribe from the original game. The red talons are supposed to be wolf supremacists, so born exclusively from wild wolves. Most of them hate every human alive for their millennia long war against predators and wolves all over the planet. The other tribes hate them because they don't compromise and are blind to the suffering of the human half of the guru. And that's why he doesn't understand much because he 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 hasn't he hasn't broadened his uh, vocabulary when it comes to interacting with humans because he was born a wolf we were born a human but then again we we're both werewolves right but the wolf didn't have the chance to actually learn that deep of that big of vocabulary right what exactly were the talents I asked Daniel. It's the tea tribe of the Garu who are born as wolves, Daniel explained. We usually don't mix with others, and we kill humans. But since I am the only one here, I decided that it was better to join the rest. It was a wise decision. It's better to have a pack than to be alone, I said. Tea, there is always strength. Ah, there is always strength in numbers. I protect my folk better when there are more wolves around. Your folk? Wolves. That was all I wanted from him. Let's ask Lisa then. I asked Lisa about her tribe, but she inherited her Sibarak legacy from her Buryat grandfather. She said I didn't know the proper legends, customs and culture to join. What's a Sibarak? Their hate, sorrow and rage are deeper than any other tribe because their icy Siberian homeland is melting and decaying. Now, now they are despised by the other tribes as half-breed loners who care only for themselves. Was Sibirak a Russian, a Russian word? So I asked, not sure how to approach the topic. Sibirak? I mean, you're from Siberia. I hesitated and Lisa smirked. But the tribe name reminds me of something. Yes, Sibirak. She pronounced it differently, so it sounded like a Polish word. I must have heard it before. I'm sure that I heard it before said in a different context. In Russia it means someone from Siberia, but in Polish it has its own very specific meaning, Lisa explained. It's a world for political prisoners exiled to Siberia, and there were tens of thousands of them. Oh, what a terrible name. She became a friendly, but I don't care. Why would you identify with so much suffering? Lisa laughed bitterly. My tribe name describes both my legacies. My granny was a political exile and my grandpa was a Siberian indigenous. I use it because it speaks the truth. How did she become a werewolf? I asked her. My grandpa saw that I had the soul of a wolf and started teaching me about the spirit world. She looked at me with her violet eyes. When the time was right, he guided me through the change. I wish my grandpa had done the same. I looked at Lisa and felt a sudden pang of jealousy. I wished my grandpa had been there for me, I growled. I guess he didn't care. Oh, he must have told you many things when you were a baby and you remembered. Like I said, how else would you know the high tongue? High tongue? The language of the guru, it depends as much on body language and tone as on actual words. Much of it is instinctive accented by pheromones, growls and whines. Mm. That was all I wanted to know from here. Thanks, that's all I needed to know at the moment. 
with you getting hostile or, or what? Lisa. Hostel, oh my god, oh my god. But I didn't want to talk anymore. I was too exhausted to bug them with personal questions. There were a lot of werewolves there. So do we have to choose now? One thing is bugging me, I said. Why are there so many of you here? Suddenly everyone in Biajovetsa is a werewolf or what? You know nothing, Cab, all the laughed bitterly. A mere century ago, there were dozens of packs in these forests. But none of the old guards survived the 90s, Lisa shook her head. We had to start from scratch. Until you showed up, there were only six of us, and the three of us not even local, Cordell pointed out. Two packs too small for their own good. Anyway, before you are admitted to a tribe, you need to prove yourself. What now? Prove myself? I was shocked. Hadn't I proven myself enough already? Rite of passage. You went through your first change, Pat said. She was leaning on a nearby tree, and you know everything you need to know at the moment. But you have to go through the rite of passage. Daniel rubbed against my flank, excited. A vision guessed Kim winked at me. And since we don't have a time for tests, we need you to solve a real problem, Olga stepped in. Namely, we want you to find a way of ending this logging problem, Cornell said gently. So how would you like to do it? They all looked at me in anticipation. I took my time. I took my time enjoying the moment. My body was buzzing with energy, ready to shift to shape on the slightest sign of danger. My mind was clear. I knew what to do. Beat the rite of passage. And I knew exactly what I wanted to do. We had to cripple the logging operation. Yes, I don't want to stop the logging. I don't want to kill more people just like that. We have to cripple the logging operation, I decided. I said, let's destroy their equipment. Kim looked unconvinced. Never mind the loggers. Kim made a dismissive gesture with her hand. We have to inspire the protesters. I continued with my plan. We have to arm ourselves, both us and the human protesters, and fight the logging, I continued. Not metaphorically, but physically. Olga nodded with approval. I know someone who can arrange some explosives for us. Daniel Bint sp spoken like a true Arun. I bet you were born under you were born under a full moon, weren't you, Maya? Arun? Those born under the full moon are the living weapons of Gaia, artists of bloodshed, ever ready to kill and to die if need be. Yeah, and that's the warriors, right? How did he know? I looked at him surprised. How did he know? Mom always told me that when she gave birth to me, the full moon was shining through the window and she couldn't take her eyes off it. Fun fact, I was also born in a full moon. A total full moon. I know it. So I'm a warrior. I'm an Arun. So I don't have brave, inspiring, analytical, spiritual, yada yada. I have glory, honor and wisdom now. Garu born under the full moon are warriors and leaders, said Olga, just like you and me. It's part of our glory and honor, added Elisa. Your place in the world of society will be determined by your renown. You can earn glory through defeating monsters, mighty enemies, and succeeding at dangerous quests. I don't know where I found the word monsters out of that, but... You can earn honor by following your moral imperative and upholding the laws of the Garu. You can earn wisdom by acting efficiently and thinking well before you act. Your renown will change as you play, contributing to Maya's legend among the Garu. Fantastic! No pressure at all. I'm a warrior. Yes. Perfect. I felt overwhelmed. Olga must have sensed my confusion. Come on, we have a lot to discuss. She patted my shoulder. And we have to find your phone and wallet. So I followed her. I nodded and followed her. I had to tie up loose ends in my old life. Back to the beginning. I'm sitting on a bus. The sun streaming through the windows is making it hard to see. The narrow road cuts through the dense old forest. My mind wanders. 
I remember doing something important, walking among the trees, looking for something, losing something I loved, gaining something unwanted. But then I'm fully awake and the memories scatter away. We're almost there, says Anya. I did some searching, she looks at me from over her phone. And this place is amazing, the last primordial forest in Europe. Are we in the beginning? Yes. I'm excited to be here. I know, right? I smile, I can't. Wow, the artwork is fantastic. It's eerie as well. I'm not able to finish, I start to cough. I spit blood. My throat is sore, my lungs hurt. Anya, I need help. Anya, I turn to her. Bartek is dead. Should we help her? She asks. Looking at something, she's clutching to her chest. It's Bartek's severed head. Let her die, it answers in a raspy voice. She had it coming. I feel something ashen and dry in my mouth. And then it starts to move. Spiders! Whoa! I spit it out and see thousands of small spiders leaving my mouth. Threads of silk cover me, the seat and everything around us. I fight. I try to fight them, but they are too small and there are too many of them. And after a few seconds, I'm covered in cobwebs, unable to move. There's a hiss. I hear a hiss. Then slowly a long, dark, thin shape comes out of Bartek's mouth. A black snake that reeks of rotten meat, acid and oil. Don't fight, Maya. You're already mine, it says. Just like your grandpa. And then it kisses me. Is that worm? Wow! That was great, actually. It was quite eerie. It was a great ending to, to the chapter. So, uh, we've, dis we've found out more about ourselves than I expected. So, basically, we understood now what kind of class we are. We were born under a full moon, and therefore we are the warrior of Gaia. But we still need to discern what kind of tribe we are. Do we get to choose? Would we get to choose? Don't know we're gonna find out in the next episode though thank you very much for watching if you liked what you saw feel free to subscribe to my channel and if you also wish click on the bell button down below so as to be notified when a brand new video goes online it is a great pleasure playing the game with you and your support is so valuable to me thank you very much for watching see you next time